Willy Wombat. When Pac-Man hit the arcade scene in 1980, he secured his place in gaming history as the world's first video game mascot. The public's overwhelming response to Pac-Man fever spurred the industry to create many of the cutesy mascot characters you know and love today. But this trend wouldn't truly blow up until 1991, when a certain blue dude injected Tood into the mascot character formula. Sonic the Hedgehog was a huge sensation that seemed to perfectly capture that 90s kid demeanor. So of course, other companies tried to ride that wave of popularity, and soon the market became flooded with game starring mascot characters, often accompanied by a heavy dose of Tood. More often than not, these characters were some kind of animal, and some of the more awful or uninspired ones include Arrow the Acrobat, Awesome Possum, Rocky Rodent, and of course, the infamous Bubsy Bobcat, with his trilogy of smelly cat hair balls. But the mascot character craze of the 90s also gave rise to some really great gaming stars, like Sparkster, the rocket pack wearing, sword wielding possum, and Klonoa, the adorable, dream traveling, uh, whatever the hell kind of animal he's supposed to be. Then there's Crash, the fun loving, crate smashing bandicoot that provided an iconic face in game to help generate buzz for Sony's first foray into console gaming. But before Crash Bandicoot debuted in 1996 and became a household name, the character went through a lot of conceptual changes, and was originally dubbed Willy Wombat. This goofier, more family-friendly version of the Crash character essentially died on the drawing board, but the name Willy Wombat would soon find its way slapped onto a game of its own. Hudson Soft, who's well known for their own popular mascot character Bomberman, published Willy Wombat exclusively for the Sega Saturn in 1997. It's a fun 3D action puzzle game that never saw a release outside of Japan, and has no relation to the Crash Bandicoot series. The environments are made up of polygons, but the characters are presented as pre-rendered sprites that remind me a lot of those found in Shining Wisdom, due to the thick black outlines. Character designs were done by Susumu Matsushita, whose art style gamers in the West may recognize from Adventure Island or Maximo Ghost to Glory. But in Japan, he is most well known for the extensive amount of artwork he does in Weekly Famitsu, the country's premier gaming publication. The star of the game, Willy Wombat, is an elite member of an advanced society called Prison, where there is no sickness or death thanks to the creation of special regeneration units. As long as one works, he or she is granted access to these units and can live forever. Willy gives up the promise of eternal life in prison, however, and sets out to find the Land of Eden, which is home to something essential that he believes Prison sorely lacks. Freedom. I know it sounds like a bunch of awful, obvious metaphors, but it makes for an interesting setup. And despite having a rad blue mohawk and pimp-tastic purple cape, Willy's levels of Tood are surprisingly on the low side, and he's a pretty mellow character compared to other mascots of the era. Anyway, in order for Willy to gain entrance into Eden, he must acquire six special stones called Miracle Gems, spread out in the lands beyond prison. The Miracle Gems attract ghosts, however, who will try to attack and kill anyone they come into contact with. Willy can deal with them using his trusty pair of boomerangs by either throwing them or hacking and slashing at close range. Most of the enemies will just try to rush Willy and cause damage by touching him, but there are some foes with slightly more varied AI and attack patterns. More attacks are unlocked by finding hidden tomes that teach Willy how to use special force attacks, which can be used by finding power-up items scattered about in most of the stages. There are three types of force attacks in total. One creates a whirl of energy that surrounds Willy. One shoots out a powerful blast wave that bounces off of walls and large objects. And one just obliterates everything on screen. Combating enemies is mostly just a minor nuisance, however, as the core of gameplay revolves around puzzle solving and platforming. In order to clear any stage, you must navigate Willy through a series of well-designed puzzles consisting of switches, pressure plates, pulleys, platforms, and the like to reach an exit. Willy can jump with the press of a button and dash by double-tapping the D-pad in any direction. 
The camera is stuck at a fixed height and angle, but can be rotated left and right using the shoulder buttons. The control scheme is really intuitive, though toggling with the camera to get the best view of the action can be frustrating sometimes, as Willy and other things of interest are often blocked by walls or objects. Stages are accessed through a rather cheap looking overworld map divided into six areas. The difficulty of these stages starts off relatively simple and a bit on the easy side, but gradually increases in complexity and challenge as new gameplay mechanics are introduced. Some of the final levels can be pretty brutal. There are a lot of power-up items to be found at any given stage, ranging from the aforementioned force items, keys, life recovery vials, and life orbs, which increase Willy's maximum health when five are collected. Once in a while, you'll come across a green tile that brings up a map, which can help point you in the right direction or find secret areas. There are also a set number of blue gems to collect in every level, which can be checked by pausing the game. The more blue gems you acquire, the more tokens you receive upon completing the stage, up to a maximum of three. These tokens don't unlock any cool extra features or minigames. Rather, using them is the only way you can save your progress, which is done by visiting a mysterious stranger named Jabba, who requires payment of three tokens each time you want to save. There are no lives or continues in Willy Wombat, so if you happen to die, it's back to the title screen, making collection of blue gems and tokens an absolute must. The story in Willy Wombat is surprisingly interesting and fleshed out for this style of game, and unfolds through cutscenes that will sometimes play between levels. Aside from Willy and Jabba, there are three antagonist characters from prison hot on Willy's trail in order to bring him back in. There's the leader, Notes, who acts as a kind of rival to Willy. Male, who is determined to uncover the motives behind Willy's quest to gather the Miracle Gems, and Tagder, a scheming brute who kind of looks like a cross between Ganon from the Zelda series and Bebop from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I won't spoil anything from the story here, but there are a few interesting twists that get all Matrix on your ass, before the Matrix was even a thing. One surprising feature of Willy Wombat is that all voice acting is performed completely in English, and for the most part is quite well done, especially compared to other games at the time. The regeneration unit? What do you mean? You yourself received the benefits of that unit. Benefits? You truly believe that unit helps us? The citizens of prison can live in happiness because of the regeneration unit. Happiness? You spend your life working to earn credits, so you can enter the regeneration unit to get rejuvenated. Even some of the more next? mundane bits of dialogue are voiced in English. All right. I'll need three tokens. Okay. Okay, I'm saving. Because of these English cutscenes and the simple control scheme, Willy Wombat is a very accessible game for non-Japanese speakers and readers. I wonder if the decision to have an English-speaking cast in Willy Wombat was a part of Hudson Soft's plans to release the game internationally. There's a cliffhanger ending that sets up the sequel, and a Willy Wombat theme song that plays during the intro and ending, so it's fair to believe that Hudson Soft did indeed have bigger plans for the series. But whatever the intentions were, Willy Wombat never became anything more than this one Japan-only game. The experience will last about 5 hours from start to finish, and while Willy Wombat starts off a little boring, it's a great action puzzle game that should be a part of any Saturn fan's library. At least I think so. Unlike some of the other games I've covered with this series, it's easy to find and can be purchased for a very low price, often under $10, so pick it up! As always, thank you for watching Import Gaming for the win, and I hope you'll continue to support this series and channel. Take care.